It's been described as one of the most exciting archaeology projects in years. The building of the tram means opening up the ground from Turnhouse to Ocean Terminal and finding surprises all the way, especially in the area between Edinburgh Park and the airport. There are archaeological sites known or suspected from aerial photographs for that whole area. So we knew there was a high, high potential for archaeological remains you know, within the, the route. In that site, prehistoric remains, possibly Neolithic, hut circles, palisaded enclosures, pits, post holes, possible kilns. So quite a range of, of material, again suggesting possible uh, different phases of occupation and different de uh, dates of occupation. The contractors digging up the streets have all received training in what to do when they come across the unexpected. The first skeleton we come across, it was a skull we found, so it was quite obvious what it was, so um, we called out the archaeologists uh, at that point and uh, they actually discovered another ten skeletons at that, that location. You're working away, you're, you're going, taking maybe an inch at a time, just scraping the top of the, the ground and as your banksman came across it, he told us to stop right away. To, to he investigated it further and found out it was a skull, so we, we stopped it and reported it to our frontline manager. We do use uh, safe digging practice because of all the buried services that are in the ground anyway and we have a banksman that watches the machine and uh, they're watching, as Tommy said, for change in uh, conditions in ground. Yes, I've been doing it. I've never came across anything mm. like it. I was shocked really at first when we, we seen it. You know I mean, you wouldn't expect a, a body in the middle of the London Road roundabout. <laughs> in fact, this part of Leith Walk's been under close observation right from the start because of a religious settlement known to have been here. Well, yeah, that's one of Edinburgh's lost sites. We've been, I've been trying to find it through other development processes, a greenside place for the last uh, decade or so. We, it was an X marks the spot um, of this, uh, started off as a 15th century chapel and then turned to, uh, became a Carmelite friar in the 1520s. And then in 1591 it was turned into a leper hospital. So we got historical records. But the X is always on the other side of the street. And then that's the thing about X marks the spot. It doesn't always mark the treasure mark. One major surprise in Leith came when digging up Constitution Street. We've, so far we found 200 bodies. And we'd expect to find possibly up to 300 in total at the end of the excavations. Uh, some of the bodies are buried in shrouds and others in simple pine coffins. Uh, and uh, some of them again have been buried individually or as part of group burials. These bones are expected to provide a wealth of information about the people who lived in the area hundreds of years ago. Uh, the bones will be taken back to our offices and cleaned and stored there. Uh, at a later date they'll be examined by our specialists who will uh, try and get an idea of the age and general health of the people and look at the bones for evidence of injuries or diseases. We'd also hope to get some of the bones tested in a laboratory to see if we can tell what sort of diet the people had and whether they were local to the area or immigrants. You know, it's a fantastic opportunity to look right through the, the centre of a city. You know, you don't normally get uh, this level of archaeological intervention and the chance to just see the whole development of Leith, the development of Edinburgh, the development of the new town. It's all, it's all there in, the, in these deposits, in these trenches, so you're, you get the, the full picture or it helps fill in the gaps in some of the, the known archaeology and history as well.